Welcome, welcome on in everyone to a brand new Total War Warhammer 3 campaign. Update 4.2 has just released, and with it brings a quite a few pretty excellent changes, especially to the Lizardmen, and of course the three Shadows of Change uh, DLC factions most of all. As far as this campaign goes, as you can probably tell, we are going to be playing as Yuan Bo the Jade Dragon. Huge thank you to everyone who partook in the uh, poll to get him selected as our chosen Cathayan champion. As far as this campaign goes, it's going to be releasing um, in a schedule that is going to be going up kind of every other day to the Mother Astankia cinematic campaign. This one is going to be a normal let's play just like all of our others. Uh, our Mother Astankia campaign, however, is going to be one with where we are just going to be playing through the, uh, the campaign as normal, but the battles are going to be on the battle replay. So It'll look a little bit more cinematic, and you can see more of the action. Hopefully, that is the intent. Uh, so let's get straight on to it. For Yuan Bo, he is the administrator of the realm, and he uses his formidable magic and a vast information network to salvage an expedition in Lustre. There will probably be a few cuts for this intro here, but Yuan Bo himself has several hats that he wears. He is, first and foremost, the administrator of the Central Provinces and the head of the uh, Celestial Court of Wizards. He's also the spy master for all of Cathay and Abroad, and currently the acting uh, emperor for all of Grand Cathay. So he is in charge of both the central provinces and the actual province that Wei Jin is currently in, that I, the name of which is escaping me. Uh, for his starting army, we've got some normal J warriors, a couple of peasant long spears, and the archers. Uh, some great long riders, a, a little bit of a changed up jade lion, which now is going to be a construct and has lost its flammable attacks, or where it caused enemies to become weak to fire, which you can then exploit with the Jade Lion's Breath, so it's lost a little bit of its, of its potential damage on that Breath attack, but it shouldn't be a problem. We've also got a unit of the Empress's Onyx Chromen, which are a fantastic flying unit. It's probably the strongest overall flying infantry in the entire game. For his faction effects, all regions owned by factions that you have a trade agreements with are invisible, so he's gonna be kind of acting like the High Elves there, and really showing off the spy master aspect of his uh, persona. He's going to have extra diplomatic relations with all of the Grand Cathayan factions, 5% more research rate for each province capital we do own, and then an additional two hero capacity for all of our astromancers, since he is the leader of the astromantic court, or whatever it is actually called. His lord effects, personally, are going to be an additional winds of magic power reserve capacity of plus 25, because he's the strongest spellcaster in Cathay. And then we've got an upkeep reduction of 30% for all of the Onyx Crowman, Celestial Lion, Jade Lion, and Jet Lion units, so he likes his crows and cats. He is definitely a mama's boy. So we get on over to the map. We've got kind of a split start here, which is quite fun, where we are hanging out in the uh, salvaged expedition to Lustria that was part of what Yin Yin was uh, attempting to invade Lustria. She thought we were, I guess she was attempting to invade the Southlands, uh, thinking they could get there by going uh, just east across the sea. However, they ran into Lustria and only a single soldier survived the trek across, so we're basically just picking up where she left off. We've also got a single province in Cathay itself that we have a choice to get rid of pretty early on in a uh, event, but we're going to keep it for the extra challenge. For his lore, we've got Yuan Bo the Jade Dragon. Amongst his siblings, the Jade Dragon is known as the most skilled manipulator of the Winds of Magic. For this reason, he leads the Astromancers of the Celestial Court, the only sanctioned wizards of the realm. Some of his family may consider him a bureaucrat, given that the diligent execution of administrative duties. His power runs far deeper and further than they could know. Behind the governors and the officials is a vast network of spies and agents, the Jade Dragon's Command, allowing him to seek out, identify, and quickly expunge threats to the safety of the provinces. If others knew of his methods, they may be judged as harsh or extreme. The harmony of the realm outweighs the desires of the individual. An iron will is required to eliminate a sickness before it can fester and spread. Indeed, and he also has a very, very excellent uh, ebook that gives us a bit more kind of flavor to him and even Miao Ying herself, and the Changeling, which seemed like he was going to be the main antagonist, rather, for both him and Astankia. Uh, but then the campaigns don't have anything to do with fighting the Changeling, which is quite odd. Uh, with that, though, for our settings, we're going to be playing on a legendary, very hard difficulty. We won't have any of the crises on, and we will have the AI stat modifier set uh, no bonuses and no debuffs. That way all of the units perform and act as they are supposed to on the battlefield. Alright, with all that, 
Our campaign begins. An ancient power stirs in the land of dragons. A force of jade and steel. Deep in the heart of the central provinces. Wei Jin, the jewel in the crown of the Celestial Empire. Home to the great Wu Shi compass. Watched over by its vigilant guardian, the Jade Dragon, master of the meteor winds. The architect of Grand Cathay's destiny. Yet as light turns to darkness, he schemes. Commanding a vast network of unrelenting spies. No lies go undetected. No whispers go unheard. The dragon's eyes are everywhere. I must range out beyond our borders. Cathay's security demands it. Indeed. You seem a bit, a bit shouty today. We'll, we'll keep an eye on the audio uh, mix here. It looks like it's fine. They may have reset the, uh, the settings on me. So for our path to victory, the Jade Court. Uh, this is kind of the first time here with the Shadows of Change where both or all three factions will have uh, the same goals on both the Realms of Chaos map so, and the Immortal Empire. So you'll get the story on both. The goals overall, or the actual things you'll have to do, will just change ever so slightly. So we have to claim four settlements here. The Great Turtle Isle. Exowattle, let's see if it'll let me teleport around to him. Oh, sweet. Great Turtle Isle. Exowattle. The Broken Lands. And Asher, which is the Star Tower. So I guess would be more uh, accurate to say the Southern Sentinels, Exowattle, and then the Great Turtle Isle. These will unlock different directions for us on the, uh, the Wujing Compass that only the Jade Court has access to. Uh, so let's get in here and we'll, before I get too ahead of ourselves here. Is the Jade Dragon's duty to increase the Celestial Emperor's influence in the world by fully harnessing the power of the Wujing Compass? Yuan Bo must activate four dormant directions unique to the Jade Court that point towards distant sites of great power. Constructing an astromatic relay at each site will empower the Compass, Greatly strengthen Cathay's dominion and bring Yuan closer or Yuan Bo closer to campaign victory. As astromatic relays are constructed, the Jade Dragon must stay prepared for hostilities from those who would seek to stop the redirection of winds of magic. Successfully activating the four dormant directions will lead to the final incursion. And we'd be fighting, uh, fighting off lizardmen the entire time, uh, because this plan entirely hinges on dismantling the uh, the great warding that they have put up in order to redirect its magics or the. Uh, a Celestial Emperor's design, whatever that might be. The plan that he and the Moon Empress have kind of disappeared to uh, set into action in the background. Our first mission is going to be to defeat a army belonging to the Blue Vipers. Uh, so the expedition has ground to a halt in the wake of the Savage Orcs meddling. Such base creatures cannot be allowed to impede the business of the dragons. Rid this land of the menace. Only then may the expedition into Lustria progress. Indeed. So what we are going to do is first wipe out the Blue Vipers, of course. And then, while it, I think it wants you to go after Hexawaddle initially, and I, we might end up doing that as well for this campaign, the Great Turtle Isle is where you get your... Ooh, it's down here even further south, isn't it? Yeah, that's actually going to have to be our secondary goal, isn't it? We will get back to that in but a moment. His campaign, instead of starting with an a, uh, alchemist, which didn't make Day much monster. sense, as alchemists are not even actually allowed in Cathay. They are pretty much only allowed in a Zhao Ming's city in the kind of the conclave of alchemists he has there, but they're anything that's not a astromancer is, is not a sanctioned wizard. 
But uh, we've got Shunma, the Gate Master here, who is looking quite awesome. He's got a cape, even. You don't have to worry about jet turbines here. He looks great as a large crossbow that is actually going to be armor piercing. Is it the same as... Yes, indeed, it shoots two shots per volley, so it's like a, one of the Celestial Dragon crossbows. Sword and board and crossbow, so a hybrid unit. We've got a trait of a solid, so extra armor, melee attack, and weapon strength. That's actually fantastic here for him, since we're going to be using him as a tank for our army. His unique skills, we've got the Bulwark of the Gate. As long as he's not moving, he gains more armor, missile block chance, and even more armor? Or is it just 15? We shall find out. We can also then dedicate him to one of these three uniques, the Jade Standard, which will decrease upkeep for our Jade Warrior units and as uh, increase their melee defense as well. Sentry of Metal, which will be better for uh, lads that are under siege, so great a choice for defending the Bastion itself. And then Gorilla Guard, which will allow him to be a better hero. He ends it up with the Bastion's Defenders, so you have an activated ability you can pass off to any unit you'd like that'll give them 24 extra melee defense and the immune to flanking trait. Fantastic. Love to start seeing some of these new traits that are were in the historical ones, and even in Pharaoh currently, uh, being implemented over here in Warhammer. Awesome. I think we're going to make pretty good use of Gunma, our Gatemaster. We'll have him go ahead and join up you with Yuanbo. Or we start off our first battle here with Drock the Orable. We've got several armies here, and our provinces are all ruined. So we've got the Hamlet and the Floating Pyramid. A dock to build up here. We, we can at least start off with the, uh, the dock building in the Isle of Crimson Skulls. Can't go for anything else there, so it's going to be a little bit of a slow start in Lustria. Which I think is exactly the point. Over here in the Celestial Riverlands, we have a land beset by the undead. And we cleared them out just fine in my first run through this. I think we can do the same. But we will start this off by recruiting in a Celestial General, who actually receives some pretty hefty buffs here with update 4.2. So I'll go ahead and we'll make sure that the update 4.2 blog post is in the description. We go for Bao Mo. So an extra armor. More melee attack and armor piercing, or just more melee attack. I'm thinking Balmo it is. Welcome Balmo. I also will continue the uh, kind of theme we had running in the first one, where anyone who was of uh, dragon-blooded descent was going to be of Yuan Bo's own line. So he is now uh, Bao Bo, which is not the, the best name, but welcome Celestial General BB. He has a hammer ready to deliver anyone the bonk who makes fun of his name. And he has the leader of men trait for any who haven't seen. And we'll just show off all the kind of the new lords. You can then dedicate him to being the bulwark of Wei Jin, which gives him a 360 missile block chance with a, a silver shield and 30 armor. An additional armor for his whole army, which is pretty solid. Again, a really, really good one for holding the line at either a Great Bastion or one of your more important fortress settlements. Uh, the Hammer of Wei Jin makes him an absolute monster. He is the Bite of the Dragon. Gives him a little bit more splash attack power, plus 50%. 60% more weapon strength, 10 more attack, and then 10% more weapon strength for the whole army. And lastly, the Comet of Wei Jin gives him more speed, Strider, Devastating Flanker, and then more charge bonus for the whole army. So this will be something you want for perhaps your Cavalry Squad or one that's more of the Air Force. When he gets to go all the way up to a, a Celestial Lion now, does he? This is probably my favorite looking addition to the Cthulhuan roster. It's kind of like a uh, purified manticore. That's supposedly how they're going to be performing. We've got the Titanic Impact lastly here, which is going to give them the Rattled Effect, dropping attack by 8 and defense by 10 of whoever they do uh, smack with that hammer. And then the Celestial Sweep, which is actually a, uh, a fire and magical attack damage with 100% armor piercing. You just spin in a circle and blend them all up. Very, kind of very similar to uh, Deathmaster Snicket with Clan Eshin. Cool. All sorts of great stuff. Uh, the Celestial Generals are, are fantastic. They didn't need a buff, but now that they have one, they're even better. 
For the Imperial we are going to use all of our stone and steel tokens here. So that's kind of also Yuan Bo's unique mechanics where we have the Matters of State, which we have these tokens that are going to uh, transmute to the other kind once you use them. So if we were to use Levy the Provinces here for two steel tokens, uh, over time, I think it's every five turns, it is indeed, every five turns, one of them will then transfer into the stone tokens. So it would then five turns later, we'd have three. And then five after that, we'd have four over here in the stone side. You can gain more tokens by doing certain actions. I am not remembering. I think it's when you actually activate. Yeah, when you activate either a commercial district or a fortress city, which is going to give them uh, bonuses to different things. Fortress cities will give you bonuses to all of the military buildings and commercial to all of your uh, infrastructure. Uh, but these will also increase the amount of stone and steel tokens you can have up to four. Really, really, really cool stuff in the Matters of State. Uh, but to start, we get to levy the provinces, allowing us to instantly complete one turn of ongoing recruitment in one army. Our next hero action is guaranteed to succeed, which is probably good in very, very select situations. Not right now, though. We've got Crackdown, which would set uh, Control and Corruption to zero. Uh, Rush Construction, which is going to instantly complete any ongoing construction, which is uh, probably the strongest one early on, uh, Rush Construction and levy the provinces. Crackdown is great if you really, really, really need uh, the help, uh, but you can handle your corruption and uh, control with proper usage of your generals. Instrument of the divine. We're gonna do something a little bit wonky here. Where we start off at Shangwu, giving ourselves access to the training camp. Because we're throwing down with the undead, having any amount of armor pretty much negates all of their early game units. So we're going to go for the training camp. And then, as sad as it might be to, or to use this already, we're going to go ahead and activate the rush construction. So a bit of extra oversight goes a long way to ensuring the carpenters spend their time on more critical matters. No breaks. We need the training camp. We can complete that immediately, which will allow Balbo then to start recruiting soldiers Attention. right away. We are going to give him just two units of Jade Warriors. Cost 99 total. Yeah, two units of Jade Warriors, and then after that, we'll just be nothing but peasant archers. And we are going to go all in on smashing the Baleful Hills. Plan is, we'll recruit these guys normally, and then move to about here. Recruit more guys normally, and then before we attack the Baleful Hills, we'll use the tokens to gain a maximum amount of troops which should allow us to dropkick them into orbit. All right, and with all that administration, let's get into a battle. Yuan Bo versus Drock. Executioner versus the Orable. Man, you are quite horrible. Looks like he's had a couple run-ins with acid in a bad way. Savage Orcs are always much scarier than they look, just because they, they dish out a bunch of damage and don't really care about defending themselves in return, so... Let's rip them to shreds. Come on, map. We've got the high ground on this side. So we're just going to set up, let them move on over towards us. We've only got the one unit of archers, so it's going to be a much more uh, melee focused brawl here. Let's get to it. All right, let's start deployment. We'll set our lads up on the hill like initially. Uh, initially discussed, and then we'll, we'll show off both the graphic settings and all our new our units here. I have the Jade Warriors set up in a bit more of a square formation. That way the archers can really make use of the fact that they are... don't have much armor piercing themselves. Long spears. Like so. Long red Jade Lion. Burbs of Death, and then Shunma, the Gate Master, who is likely going to become our first Kevin. That is a gigantic crossbow. A bit sad he doesn't have kind of a Pave style shield, but we'll see if maybe he does deploy it as such. We'll grab you on bow, and we'll get this battle going. The only mod that is currently updated is going to be the better camera one, so. That is all we currently have running. Eventually, we'll probably have 
the dynamic world as well as better building progression mod, but until then, these are going to be very light on the mods. Our Jade Warriors. Very heavily armored, all the way up to these uh, pretty awesome neck coifs. I don't know exactly what you would call that, but it's armor for your neck and it's smart. We've got our, our spearmen here. Also look fantastic. Essence of Cathay. And actually, the Kiss the Lights have themselves a kind of peasant long spear unit now. They may just be called uh, Kiss the Light farmers or something along the lines. They've got spears just like this. I called them halberds, so maybe they've got some armor piercing, which would be cool. We are united. They are Seeing the spears, the great longbow riders, whom are fantastic unit. Order shall guide us to triumph. You trade pretty well against Doom Knights, but they, they do struggle against the Armored Flying Menace from Zinch. Last but not least, uh, the Yin Elementals of the Moon Empress. We actually now have the Elemental trait, so once they get low on leadership, they will disintegrate away similar to demons. I believe the Crowmen, as well as the two large Elementals, the Elemental Incarnate of Beasts and Ice, uh, those have both been given the elemental tag. This gives us some really good indications that Araby is likely on the way. Or we're going to get some elemental style units with End and Koresh, which will be cool. Let's get it going. We'll move everyone up here. I do a lot of using all Yuanbo forward. And these I'll kind of give you secrets on how I. Let us execute the will of the Obi. immortal Emperor I, himself. You are a whole speech. Fantastic. Defend Next time I won't interrupt. You get all the units you want, you can lock the group and still uh, give them orders. And they'll stay in formation, just like that. Or you, if you don't want to lock them, you can get everyone selected as you want. Hold Alt, and you can drag them around with your left click. Uh, if you hold control at the same time, you can then rotate that unit. If you are not holding alt when you release it, or if you're holding alt rather when you release it, they will walk to that position instead of run. At least they're supposed to. Not working out for me this time. Shunma, you go up front here. I'm gonna have you post up. They've got Savage Orc Boar Boys on this side. They should struggle quite a bit against the Shim's Burning Gaze. We'll launch that on out. Yoink. He didn't even look at him. Disrespect. Pretty good hit there. Although I think we only took out one model. That's one we don't have to worry about now. We're going to have to coax them out of their position a little bit here. Maintain the high ground, those kind of set up like this. Send the Wherever I am Longma and our Lion out. Onyx Chromen are going to struggle a little bit against this unit, this group here, just because they're all pretty good fighters, including their air boys. We'll launch at another Shims at this group. Maybe we can hit more than one. We got no, just another one falls. Oh no, we got two that time. Sweet. They're still unimpressed. They're gonna stay up there the whole time. You find your lord. We've got the emperor's executioner here with uh, Yuanbo, which will just deal a pretty hefty amount of damage. Or if they're below 20% health, they just die immediately. I'm also keeping him in human form for now, just so these archers don't start lighting him up. As soon as the battle gets going for real, we'll, we'll show off his uh, proper dragon form. Turn and try to launch. Well, let's actually make sure you're running up. We actually can fire on them with the crossbows and arrows. They are going to catch you. It's fine. We have all of the flyers to help out. Yuanbo can continue to retreat, no problem. Drawing them in. We'll go for the Jade Lion's Breath to try to break up this formation. Yuanbo, you keep moving. 
Crossbow bolts. Definitely look like they hurt. Let's send the Longma over the top. Definitely gonna be firing on the Jade Lion. You get moving. Yep, that's a little bit more damage than I would have wanted. Any more than zero is more than we would have wanted. Give yourself the ward save and you can turn and fight. Now we'll send the Longmas in. Jade Lion. Keep pulling them in a little bit further here and then we'll turn and charge with the spears. And these Jade Warriors. Perfect. Along the caught the first group, and we're gonna actually go ahead and double down on them. Blend them up as fast as we can. That damage. Now we'll have the long the switch targets. Yonbo, you bullying these more boys here. Fall back there a little bit. Let's launch some arrows at these savage orcs. Have the normie warriors move in to engage them. Hopefully we don't get too many of our own. Not bad at all. And you want though you move in as well. Keep blasting Oglock. He's quite horrible. How long I have that? No problem. Let the crows chase these idiots off. Line, you come on away. We'll have the warriors and one bow. You pull back. Just drop down the, the executioner blade just for some damage. Give them the ward save, and then we'll turn back around and do some damage. Awesome. I, uh, Spears, you're gonna have a bad day there, likely. Those savage orcs are actually fighting for quite a while. It broke just in time. Let's bring the crows over. And looks like we've got them. Rest in peace, Oglock. He shall make a lovely chew toy for our Jade Lion. I'm gonna run down the rest of these orcs here. I'll catch you all in a moment. Alright, we'll take an easy first win there. Slicing the header, clean off the blue vipers. We gained a crystal of Hunalan. What explosion? Explosion that just goes off as a passive? That's fantastic, especially on our uh, Yuan Bo here, or even the Gate Master, either one. Uh, we will start off by... It was such a tough call. I think we need the gold, but we're not pardoning anyone here, especially not Savage Orcs. We slaughter them. End this now. Do not let discord ferment else. Exactly. And we reach Gormug here this turn. There's a thousand treasury for slaughtering that first group. Grand oh, we Lord. can't. Oh, you're really, really uh, limited here, Yuanbo. More warriors mean fewer farmers. That's very true. Such is the way. Would love to build in the hamlet, but I'm pretty sure that would, especially since it's going to take three whole turns, it's likely that they want you to use the matters of stone or the matters of state to uh, finish up the hamlet right away, which would give you a garrison of two spears, two warriors, and two archers. Don't think that's enough to, to hold back. We'll be coming after you. Savage orcs are mean. Keeper of Wuxing. All right, so judge. Oh, we get our we get our special ability already. Ooh, okay, well, let's go for route markers. We can actually move around in Lustria a bit more, and then we'll switch back around. Executioner. Tactician is amazing. We're gonna grab training first, and then switch back up to tactician. How big of an area is that? 55 meters. It's pretty hefty. Five extra defense and five reload skill. A lot of blue vipers to deal with here, but I think they will also be at war with... Really the blood hole coming. We need to take some land quickly before they try to snooch in and steal our goodies. Alright, our first Wu Jing compass direction. We can go ahead and set things for the Great Bastion. Gives us a little bit more replenishment rate in the Ancestral Warriors army ability in our own regions, which is pretty solid. We've got the lake, which gives us more control income, and then winds of magic increasing. The wrath, which is less corruption and uh, sets the nuke microwave on maximum beyond the Great Bastion. 
And then what used to be the most bugged one, which we're not going to select, is the Warpstone Desert. This is what you want to go for usually with uh, Zhao Ming, as he already kind of starts off with extra, I think it's cargo uh, capacity for his caravans. We are going to begin things with actually the Celestial Lake to help out with control. It doesn't give us any ancestral... You know what? No, we're going to go for the Great Bastion. Control. Who needs it? We've got the Ghost Warriors from the past. We're going to leave the Floating Pyramid as is for at least one turn. Otherwise, that's, that's money completely thrown into the fire if they take it out. All right. We've got a supposedly a brand new technology tree here, so we'll take a look together. We start off with seasoned trackers, so extra movement range for Yang characters and more replenishment rate for Yin ones. That is very different. We'll take it. Especially if you want Bo counts as both, like I believe you should. So far, things look very similar to how they previously were. Extra income from industry. Growth. Maybe the change is going to be a little bit further in, or if they are, they're going to be a little bit more subtle. That's just fine. All Cathay will thank us. All Cathay will thank us. If they even know what we've done for them. We're ending the turn. We'll pull our diplomacy tab up. Make some deals with the Cathayans. Apparently, nostril damnness. No, not today. Fire and we will trade with Zhao Zhao. Provinces Snag and non aggression back as well. We're not necessarily in this for the stealing or the taking of the coins from them. We're just trying to set up a powerful this alliance and hopefully confederate Zhao Ming as fast as we can. May the master of the celestial winds guide us all. Agreed. Young son, I will take your money. For the dragon. You've got a lot of land, but it goes away quite quickly when Nikai decides to come knocking. Luckily, Nikai is very allergic to crossbow bolts. Celestial General. You can also trade with the custodians. Perfect. Greetings. We can go all the way up Part to a military access back with the, the custodians. I am a warrior. Which we will. Not a diplomat. I accept. The dragon. And then the re like Eastern River Lords, we will grab the, the trade agreement and the non-aggression back with. Us all. 40 coin crate. Harmony is a Already weaving our influence. Child of untold ruination. That's right. Since we aren't actually currently at war with the Yangshi rebels, they won't come over here and try anything. So we can launch the surprise attack on them. It shall be glorious. Before we end our first turn, I will show you all the graphic settings we're rolling with for this campaign. They might change as things go on. Uh, but for now, this is what we're currently sitting up. And back to it. We will go ahead and hang out with... Oh, this is our... This is our capital. Interesting. I'm gonna go back over to Yuan Bo. And that's where we'll end our turn. A yoink. Yes, yeah, several armies have now appeared. So we've got Grebitz Bootlicka and Gormog Gitrencha. Where can you lot go? He can't go much further than here, so we are safe so to move up in March stance. But I think it's a good idea to make sure we recruit in some more troopers. Of which it's we would not be able to do it all at the Floating Pyramid. Okay. So exactly. We're going to go to March. Interesting that we can go past where it says we can. Tell the soldiers, move! Rebits can't get to us. Gormog is likely to run. Either way, we can get up to the float pyramid. Or the floating pyramid. Here next turn. And we can try to start getting in some more soldiers. Or Yuanbo, who doesn't necessarily need him, them, thankfully. Celestial General. As far as Bao Bo goes, we'll pull you out of the settlement. Go into encamp. We keep an eye on the Baleful Hills and give us some more lads. I will make a soldier out of every raw recruit. Let's get down to business. Chosen. Oh. Hmm. Beat. 
the Huns. Or the Kazakh, which I think is the exact same. Alright, that's about all we can get to for this turn. It still wants us to build up a floating pyramid, which I am very, very uh, not okay with. Every battle we fight, I think, also is going to increase this by one. So if we're really min-maxing, we should have stone and steel tokens coming back pretty quickly. Alright. There are rats here in Spectazuma, but I should be at the celestial if city. we're... If we're lucky, they won't come out and attack you on bow. Either way, we would body slam them. That'll be the turn. All right, they're just gonna run for the hills. I mean, Ekazuma is now completely in the open. They're likely hanging out at the High Sentinel trying to recruit more. We could hit Spectazuma. We've got the ward save and the crystal of Kunlan, so ripping up the rats really wouldn't be that big a deal. As long as they don't have any weapons teams. Let's come back over to the undead uh, battlefront before making any further decisions Attention. there. Yeah, I think we, we just go ahead and grab more arrow flingers. We go ahead and swing on into the Levy the Provinces. One man and one woman from every village, and one soldier from every garrison. I'm sure we're making uh, the populace love us. Good old conscription. Serve from the front. And now with that, we should have no trouble taking the Baleful Hills. There are a lot of them. There are more of us. In spirit. Well, before we declare war on them, though. Let's go ahead, we can do so through the Burning Wind. Our affiliation has been beneficial. I will join your war and you give me... a small crate of gold. Sweet business. Now we've got a new enemy. Elbow. Smash. Decisive win. We could give this one to the auto resolve, probably. But I want to do my best to maintain our formation. Maintain as many of these guys as we can for the next battle. Uh, so we need to make sure we keep Balbo back to throw down with the Dire Wolves and the Filbats, because they're going to be going right over the top to go after our Peasant Archers. And then from there, it's just let our Jade Warriors hold the line from the hordes of zombies. Let's do it. Alright, quick jump cut. A one lunch break later. I'm going to pick up the Lady Wizard for lunch. We've had ourselves some homemade chicken tortilla soup, and it was fantastic. And now let's have ourselves battle against the undead. I mean, could we force them to come through over here? That would be the ultimate choke point. I don't think we necessarily need to, though. I think no matter what, trying to force our way over here would be awesome. But they move fast enough that we would have to be dealing with the dire wolves on the way over. Let's go. Archers. We will control down a few times to make them at a little bit more of a grouped formation. And then let's go ahead and set them up where one of the archers is in front, and the other two are on the other sides, and then we'll have infantry in as blocky of formations. We want these Jade Warriors to set up and then not move. We still want them to be giving their harmony buff, which is a little bit concerning. We needed a few more foot soldiers here for this one. I don't think he counts as Yin or Yang at the moment. Nope. Sadly enough. Okay. The celestial faithful. Praise that means a couple of our lads here aren't going to get the, the harmony buff, but we kind of need to keep them Praise up in front. The that way they're getting surrounded by skeletons and things and using their armor to hold the line. Alright. Let's get it going. The archers in a group, and then everyone else can stay as they are. We'll scoot forward just a little bit. Oh, are they not going to come over here to us at all? Hang on now, that, that gives us an opportunity. There's a few trees over here, but we could force them to come up. Here, let's get moving. See if we can get this uh, to work. We'll bring the archers round. Don't mind if they're a little bit clumped together. 
You can go one Jade Warrior unit up front here to stop them from getting around. And the uh, Celestial General as well. Well, they see what we're up to. Maybe it doesn't matter, though. Then we'll keep the other unit behind in case. But this way we can fire arrows up and over the the uh, gully here, and they'll all be stuck in one spot. Too bad we don't have any fire arrows, but that is not the way that this one is meant to be played. Defenders of Cathay! Peasant archers! All right, we're just moving, and they haven't reacted even a little bit. Which is a bull's strategy. As far as our archers go, we're going to go ahead and set. You guys are going there. Let's pull them up a little bit further up on this hill. A little bit over as well. And then the hillside lads can... Uh, we're just not going to be getting much of the harmony buffs. And I think that's going to be just fine. I'm going to charge you directly into these dire wolves. Shouldn't have any amount of armor piercing to get through his uh, bulky frame. Bringing harmony. And charges the Celestial General. Maximum bonk is about to be achieved. Oh, the dire wolves are going to go right past him. All right, fair enough. Celestial General. Our wolves said absolutely not. Jade warriors. Since they're all going to go the right way, let's bring these jade warriors up. Stop them from getting past this. You also do your best to stop them. We'll stand here, and I think we should uh, be able to tear them to pieces. Lost a single unit. There's a lot of a melee attack that comes out of the dire wolves. Right, all archers switch targets to the Felbats. Felbats going after the general is just fine with me. We've got a layered defense here. They mean to collide against us. There's nothing they can do about it. Low leadership or no? We will throw down our ability here, which can give us melee defense and resistance. Just let that... Let the waves of undead crash against us. You go ahead and smash it. We'll just pull you back and keep you hitting the flanks there. Perfect. What we'll do with this group is just rotate them a little bit. That way they're able to fire on uh, the flank here. A little bit better. Go ahead and smash into this next group of zombies. We'll keep these other warriors just in case they try to flank. Legions of Cathay. It says they're not. Don't have any orders. They are defending. If they're indeed going to try to flank, so let's move these Jade Warriors in to help out. Keep firing on these zombies. Those Skelly Warriors should be wrapped around our Jade Warriors as well, so that should be uh, no problem. We can watch the fighting. Ooh. That's why you don't stand in a line. This hammer is uh, 3D for everyone. You love the purple that the Jiangxi Rebels are, are rolling with. Hopefully we get a purple fan faction. Likely not, but would be great. I know you zombies don't get to move past our line. You stay right there. We need to use all of our arrows, then get those peasant blades to work. Once they start crumbling, low, let's fire on another unit. A Gustave. Fire on Gustav. Try to deal with the uh, Lord. Break that leadership. Jade Warriors are starting to get driven back, which is not a lot of fun. Lost about 15 of their, their unit. Keeps 
got a wall here that they're not getting through. We're able to fire with impunity even until it's time to charge in. At which point our losses are going to probably skyrocket. Come on, warriors. You got this. Make sure you are all firing on Gustav. Give everyone here a bit more resistance and melee defense. Hold the line. I see lots of, lots of binding starting to cripple away. Leadership starting to waver. Luckily, our, our stores of ammunition are still doing fine. All right, Gustav's gone, and I think that's going to break everyone else. Glorious victory for Cathay. They just go flying in different directions. Not going to be that dramatic about defeat. Look at this guy here. Stuck himself with his own machete. No, the Jade Court doesn't allow undead filth to be skulking around in our cities, so... 36 lost, they will be remembered with honor. Go ahead and occupy the Baleful Hills and start fixing the area up, cleaning up these cobwebs and taking down the, the plastic bats they've got hung up in the trees. For Bao Bo here, I think we're going to want the Inspiring Presence to give our lads a bit more experience. A fine addition and we're going to bring him in some more lads. Let's go... Probably need one more long, one long spear for an additional uh, wall unit and then one more set of archers. Beautiful stuff. So now we need to wipe out the Bridge of Heaven and Shilong, and we have the Riverlands under our control. Go ahead and take out this building. It looks like the Gate Master comes in at the Tier 3 Barracks, which does make all of the sense. It'd be cool if we also get to recruit him through certain buildings in the Bastion itself. We'll see, won't we? I'm back over to Yuanbo. Since all of the orcs have decided to run for the hills, I think we strike Spectazuma. We don't have a ton of units here, but this will be an additional provincial capital, which will give us three, so 15% more research rate right off the bat. That sounds pretty good to me. So, Master onward to victory peace. or defeat. These be no clan mange. So don't cancel the move. Alright, well, Metable the Corrupted is hiding in the walls, but thankfully he's just a warlord, so he won't have any kind of nasty magics to blast our lads apart with. Who are you clowns at war with? Welcome, Outlander. What brings your kind to Hello, Wolfheart. I will join your war with Mange if you give me the monies. Everyone's so poor. Strength rank 18. It's the fastest I've ever jumped up in strength rank. Unless you're playing as maybe corn, uh, we'll absolutely go ahead and uh, take the war with mange for 360. Agreed. It's a little bit of gold. We can use it to recruit some more peasants. All are likely going to be crushed under the jade dragon's heel, but uh, for now we can I make friends, quote unquote. We'll slip on the jade mask when it's time to take their stuff from them. Expect Azuma. Uh, probably a good idea to build up some wall breaching. Hours, but we need time is of the essence here, so we're gonna go all in. The Onyx Chromen are gonna rip asunder all of the Skaven Slave slings, and clan rats are of no no actual consequence. So let it begin. All right then. We'll start deployment, and I think we are going to attack from uh, this position. There's only the one tower that can fire on us. This one's got a little bit of uh, geography in the way. Some shroomies and the like. We'll go ahead and have everyone waiting for Yuan Bo to kind of clear the way. And also, we want to bait out a few of those obnoxious Minutes Below summons. So we will keep... Jade Lion, do you have Siege Attacker? No, so we'll keep you back here to defend. And then we'll have the flyers rolling up with Yuan Bo. And the Gate Master too, since he has a nice shield. Archers. Put two of them there. Jade Lion behind. 
I like this. Everyone's covered. And we should be far enough back to the tower can't fire on us. Alright then. Uh, see one bow and the other single entities in a group. Infantry, missile boys, wave and guard mode, and then the flyers. Unleash with a democracy. You move on forward, start chopping down those gates. Gate master, what can you really do? I will set you up here. Try our best to dodge the, the fire as it comes on in. Onyx, Chroman, and the like, where are their isolated units? We could just land on the wall, which I think is what we're going to do. Here, you on, but we got to move around a little bit. Otherwise, we'll be taking all sorts of free damage that I'm not really, not really keen on. We could just go dragon mode, get up and over the walls. In fact, let's do it. He unleashed his big papa mode. Oh, and now it's time. Okay, Dragon, go find Metable the Corrupted and give him a hug. And by him, of course, I mean his Skaven Slave Slings. Alright, Longbows have hit the wall. Roman are a little bit behind. Let's start bringing everyone else in. Uh, but we'll have them walk, that way they stay... I said we'll have them walk, that way they stay in formation as best as possible. One bow is ripping him apart. Alright, Chroman, let's get you guys back up in the air. You're pretty weak in terms of actual uh, melee. On the ground, at least. Quick to being overwhelmed. Don't have a lot of armor. Alright, one bow. Keep dancing around in the Skaven Slave slings. We'll switch you back into other formation or other mode here in just a moment. Let our flyers get back up in the air. Crows come away from those towers. See to their towers they built. That's a much more internal tower, so shouldn't be too much of an issue. Alright, you guys come over the top. Let's go ahead and smash this group of Skaven Slave Slings. Although, Yuan Bo's doing just fine. You charge through like a chariot? Mate. Oh, we can. What a nightmare. Oh, those are normal clan wrath, they're all coming down, so let's not. Everyone else, move in. Yuanbo, you can go ahead and duel Metable. Should be an easy clap. Cavalry, let's get you guys back up in the air. You're kind of all over the place, but you don't really want. Yuanbo, back into normal mode. Lion into the gatehouse. Everyone else, go ahead and start running. We'll leave you in the back to help out. Where are you going, brother? Great to helicopter. Look at him run! Skaven man, do you claim this one is your own? Or is clan mage disowned? Look at him run! He knows there's no chance. Just a couple hits and Yuanbo will have him finished. Alright, let's get these uh, Longma back up in the air. Alright, so have the normal warriors get up on the walls, because we are losing a few to uh, just attrition from the towers, which is no fun. There we go. Support has arrived. Let's have Ulias come over and deal with the other group of slings, and then we'll have the, uh, the Crows of Doom do the same. Um, but by slings, I mean, let's come over here and deal with this piercing tower. And you're still trying your best. Let's go, a bit of Jade Shield for uh, the Warriors hitting the wall. Clear my throat there. You guys didn't want you all to have to listen to drop blade. And that's the Lord finished. You tried your best there, or your best there, rats. Wasn't enough. I don't really want you to move forward. What I do want you to do is try to come away from this tower, get a bit cheesy with it. Spears next to. Right, switch you back into a dragon as soon as we can. Try to get our longbows back up in the air. We're gonna have to go through enemies either way. Right, 
flying piranha. Get this, this tower down. One bow. Let's go ahead and drop down one more jade shield on the warriors coming through. And then switch back into dragon mode. Look at these Longbow. They're lost. Okay, Longbow. You're going to start dropping quickly. Get out of there. Yuan, you just go ahead and land. Do the thing. Or, or not. There we are. So then maybe we got him stuck. So our archers are un, unwilling to fire on Ballistic the Warpsmith. Oh, we threw the gates finally. There we are. Get in there and start doing some damage. Meanwhile, the longbar back of the air, we've only lost, we've lost one, which is no fun. There's all sorts of disorganization on the ground here. They're just kind of flying in circles. You guys will hit the uh, tower. Let's tear that down so we're not dealing with that piercing damage anymore. Gate master, let's go ahead and move in. They should destroy these Skaven Slaves. Rotate the archers so they can actually help. A lion and dragon rolling around in the rats. A great time. How many kills is a uh, boy bow up to 168? Not bad. Charge through into the spears. It's like they chose not to hit the tower like I asked them to, so we're going to lose lots and lots of uh, Roman. That's all right. They can replenish. He's just destroying them. Archers, come on in. We have a pretty good defensive position for you guys now. Oh, we didn't actually get through the gates. The AI were just up to shenanigans. Those rats. Towers down. Let's go ahead and find an isolated unit of uh, slings and deal with them. Along with you get the bigger chunk. And push through those are spears, so they're gonna they're gonna hurt a little bit. There's these two longma here that are completely stuck. There's another group that's broken. Completely shattered means when you see the little skull, they're not coming back. Otherwise they will recover their leadership. At least they have a chance to, like this little flag here. Alright, Longma, let's find you another weakened group. Smash these Skaven Slaves, and we'll send these crows up over everyone else. Ooh, explosion of rats. If you are wondering why none of them are turning into giblets, I have, I just realized, a uh, weaver, I was letting the small wizard watch, and I turned off the blood and the discombobulated bits, but I guess I forgot to get anything more than just the blood on. I don't mind this, though. You can see the bodies go flying, which is quite fun. And I would. Retreat, surrender. We're all stuck here in this one zone. Bring our archers in to uh, man the walls so they can't get taken out by summons of menace below. Everyone else can move in to chop up the survivors. Alright, Yuanbo, come on back. Go through and hit this next group. We'll leave these spearmen here to be uh, run down by uh, the Gate Master Shun Ma. Right, those groups are all broken. Let's bring them back through and go after this group of Skaven Slave Spears, which is more or less just a meat shield. Land Rat Spears. We should probably let you on no hit first. Either way, I'm not supposed to get in his way. They're completely disrupted. Pull them on out. Same thing here with our uh, our longmas. Lion, you come away from those spears. 373 kills for the big green boy. Go ahead and run over these Skaven slaves again there. Looks like the crows are in a little bit over their heads. Pull them out. They managed to kind of pull together. Longbow, let's get these slings. Got them caught in a... Not sure what this is, but it's just a blob of fleeing rats. Yeah, souls belong to me now. Yeah, we're losing a few more Chromen, which makes me a bit sad. 
such chaotic uh, battle animations. And they all do so much damage. I think all of his body is a hitbox. Would explode. That was the Crystal of Kunlan, I think, going off there. Push them all inward. We'll bring the uh, flying chickens out. And that's the win. Slow and steady. It beats the rats. One boat cartwheels through them. I'm going to let him continue to rack up some kills here just for the experience. And uh, I'll catch you in a moment. And it's going to give us a close victory. That was less like shooting fish in a barrel and more like stuffing a whole salmon in like a little coffee cup and blasting that with a shotgun. Uh, well, Spectazuma falls to us. Key location. Key location. Just chuck the rats off the cliff. That's what they deserve. I think I would torch them just in case of any kind of super, uh, super black plague or fleas they might have on them. So Imagine the size of the fleas. Ugh. Inspiring recruitment. Fervent. Blue line for you is great. But only 6% less upkeep. Uh, we don't need that. Let's go for the Judge and Inspiring Presence. That way we now have two uses for his uh, Executioner ability. Eye of the Emperor. Tactician, uh, tactician, rather, for Shun Ma, which we are absolutely going to make our Kevin for this one. We make him Kevin Ma. You can keep your uh, last name, Shun. He has become a new and improved Kevin. Spec to zoom up, we're going to go ahead and air the training camp out. For now, this is just going to be a gem mine. Just a gem mine. Building up the floating pyramid to lure them back over. Is this a worthwhile use of a thousand gold? We can try it. I'm up for seeing if it works. Malbo has himself some new lads coming on in. If we had the tokens, we've got one of each now. Uh, we could go for a global, take off one turn of it, and then he has a whole heap of troops next turn. Don't have, don't have what it takes for that one. Servant of the dragons. I'm actually curious about clearing out the training camp now that we have. We really only need spears to clear out. Clear out the undead. We can maximize our economy by getting some more animals. You know what? Let's go ahead and do it. You are just recruiting the peasants, and we'll use them to defend the homeland for now. The boss. Frost Clubs? How long are you going to be alive? I'd, I've never even seen this faction. Fire. Probably one that greases and bumps right on the noggin, pretty much right off the bat. Ow, bow. Back over to Yuan. Indeed. Right, Burn is back to you on, and we didn't recruit soldiers. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, we can, though, push up past the High Sentinel, or just kind of hang out in the Floating Pyramid. Check their siege provisions. Check their siege provisions. Three bits is recruiting more lads. Hurry. Perfect. More fools to slaughter. Get one more spear, one more archer. Which we should have done over here in Spectatuma, but forgot to do. Get the gem mine shaft in there though for the hundred income and it's sixteen sacks o gems. Dwarves to work. Back over in the Riverlands, we can put in our exotic animal tamer here and grazing pastures here for growth and income. Instrument of the Ow. We don't necessarily know where this army is hiding because there's they've got at least one army over here. We need to try to lure them in. While also recruiting more troops. Fight and be recompensed. Let's do one more spear, one more archer, but let's go kind of Move fast. Cross river swiftly. They go out of this one. I want to see what they've got over here. Take time to gain the enemy's measure. Stay mobile. A little bit more. Loyal novices. Since I can't see the bridge of heaven, I don't trust it. Come on, let me give me vision. Occupy any passes. No, we're not gonna do it. Move upon my we're in a really bad spot now, so we'll stay here. We're not gonna go any further up. Grab some more spears and archers, and hope they don't have what it takes to take us on. One of each token here. Alright, alright. Back over to Yuan Bo. Who is actually recruiting soldiers this turn? 
since we've got 16, we could probably afford an additional general to follow you on bow around and then kind of turn around and defend Spectazuma. There are still rats in the Wellsprings of Eternity that we have to keep an eye on. Yeah, while we're here, let's go ahead and add in a new lord. And we've already got a Celestial General on the other side. Let's grab a Lord and Magistrate just for holding the line and just kind of... Because he's, he's going to be staying in Spectazuma for a while. His job is basically just going to be to stay there. Boost up the city as much as possible. In order to do so, I think we're going to go ahead and grab the lettered Zhao Kang. That way he'll gain experience faster. Can you go on the other side of the floating pyramid? I don't know. I don't know how you can do that, but we'll take it. Let nothing slow you. Go into March stance to try to gain uh, the trait for staying in March for a couple turns, and we'll end the turn. The dragon After taking a fast, fast look at diplomacy. On the hunt. Yeah, we'll get a non-aggression with you Speak, and a trade. Be wary of what you say. Military access would keep him from causing any issues with us coming through to try to claim the final Skaven settlement, so we'll do it. Okay. I can easily slip on the Jade Mask later, which is one of our matters of state, and uh, drop kick Marcus out of existence. He's actually fighting with Brodolo, huh? Char no, not aggression with Thoxlon. All of the lizards will fall. Double the practice drill. All right, we've been assaulted by the Jiangxi rebels. A Yue Xiaolan is leading the charge. He's got a bunch of dire wolves, a bunch of zombies, and himself, who is... Oh, he's got Spirit Leech. That's... That's actually a little bit more scary than normal, because normally they just have the Invocation to Heck and Von Hells, which is... It's fair enough, but Spirit Leech will allow him to zap away some health from our Celestial General here. Doesn't have the most. Water Resolve says we'll have a Pyrrhic victory and lose nobody. And in your campaign, I think I would go ahead and use the auto resolve, but for our own. And for the sake of... Ooh, just kidding. That's a choke point. It's going to be an awesome battle. We shall begin the next episode off with a fight against the purple cloaked Emperor Palpatine. But for now, I'm out of time for today. I hope you all enjoyed the first episode in our Yuan Bo Immortal Empires campaign. If you did, remember to leave a like for the light god and a sub for the zone. See you on the next one.